We have a group of special guests from Skyler, Nebraska with us this evening. They are here in support of a number of... <laughs> Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Westmar football. This Sunday night, it's uh, Westmar against Midland Lutheran. It's the 31st meeting between these two old rivals. Westmar winning 21 to 16 a year ago to snap a four game losing streak in this series. A beautiful sunny evening, clear blue skies overhead, just a perfect football night. Nice crowd gathering. It's Skyler night here in honor of the eight Skyler football players in the roster of these two teams and the two coaches, former Skyler High School coaches. Kick off by Westmar's Jim McPartland is going to be taken by Seawall back at about the 9 to the 10 to the 15, out to about the 20, and that's where the Warriors are going to put the offense in play here tonight. Down to the specialty third. team, making the tackle for Westmar, for number, number 10, Trent Perry Quick, a sophomore out of Trainer, Iowa. Actually, we mentioned eight uh, players on this uh, roster for both. There actually is only one left on the Midland Lutheran roster. I believe someone told me three of those people are now on the injured list, and for Westmark, Kelly McClinic, probably the most notable of the Skylar Central graduates, and he won't be playing tonight very likely because of a stomach injury that sidelined him for the starting quarterback spot. Midland comes out with a high-powered wishbone attack. They've had to replace half of the components. Back to pass. Sanders throwing out there for tight end Steve Johnson. It's over his head. Good coverage by Frenchie Holmberg and Kurt Westoff out on the right flat. And it's going to be a second down and 10 to go for the Warriors back at their own 20. Midland lost Gerald Mason from the fullback spot last year. He rushed for 2,000 yards in his last two years, and Mark Campbell graduated. So Doug Harrington's moved from a split-in spot to one halfback spot, and Mark Stoley, a junior, takes over at fullback. Terry Seawall back to claim the other halfback spot. Chris Sanders back at quarterback this year. Seven starters back on offense. There's the give up the middle to Stoley. Stoley out over the 25 to about the 26, 27 yard line. Carried by number 27, Mark Stoley. They'll pound the middle with that fullback pretty regularly. And Midland, unlike a lot of uh, wishbone teams, they don't go with the big fullback. They go with a lighter weight, quicker fullback, more of a running back style fullback. And they utilize their wishbone for one thing and one thing only, and that's quickness. And they like to get to the outside. They try and attack your flanks. Quarterback Sanders just did get the handoff in there. Stoley going to be stuffed right of the line of scrimmage. Kratzel was there. We see Udick getting up off the pile. And down underneath, beneath everybody, is Oswald. Defensively for Westmar, Mike Rogers, Mark McLeod of the ends, Wayne Udick and Dan Kratzel the tackles, Dan Oswald the nose guard, Robert Johnson, Kurt Westhoff of the linebackers, and Brad Kratzel in there as a strong safety, Joe Holmberg, Scott Seeloff, and Frenchie Holmberg. Round out the Westmar defense tonight. And here's the first punt of the ball game on fourth and about five. Kicked off to the right side. Safford makes the catch on the run and immediately runs into some resistance. Pretty good smack going to be put on there by John Picorni, number 67, a freshman out of Rising City, Nebraska. Safford dangerously coming up in the middle there making the catch. Well, it's the Westmar offense has got a bit of a new look here tonight. The quarterback is Marcus Hancher. Now, he was over in the secondary last week, intercepted two passes. Coach Mazel jokingly said, we probably got the only starting quarterback in college football that's second in the nation in pass interceptions this week. Hancher rolling right, looking, looking. Now he's running to the 50 and down short of the 50-yard line at about the 49. Jim Granger, freshman out of Omaha, makes the stop with the defensive end spot. Seven returning defensive starters for Midland. And the replacement parts basically came from the incoming freshmen. The two cornerbacks are freshmen. That defensive end just making the hit there a freshman. And one of the replacement parts at linebacker, a sophomore. So they've got some young kids and some key spots tonight. And how well Midland does tonight, probably going to hinge a lot on how well those newcomers do in the collegiate ranks. There's Charles Hill blasting off tackle and into Midland territory. He'll carry to the 46. Going to pick up about five in the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Still going to need about four for the first down. Good collision inside. Quite a stack of bodies, and they're unpiling. After Dan Egan made a good hit inside, and it was Rick Shanks coming up and giving his two cents to the thing. He's a hometown product here, sophomore out of Fremont. No score, opening quarter. Boy, what a beautiful night. The sun's setting over in the west. Allowing us to see the... Feel just a little bit better. It's, uh, it was really gleaming down as the opening kickoff. 
started things off tonight. Wish Mar Westmar and a wishbone set of their own. Hancher on a pitch at a bad pitch. Charles Hill going to fall on it back at the 46-yard line. So it's going to bring up the fourth down, a punting situation. From the recovery for number Still scrambling after the football, but Charles Hill got back on it, I believe. Got a flag down back at the line of scrimmage, though. Let's see what that is. Midland already showing a sign they're going to refuse, so... They think it's on Westmar. Holding going to be the call against the Eagles, and it'll be declined, so it's going to be a punting situation. And Rob White will be on to do the punting. White a week ago in his initial start as a punter, remember he was punting a lot from uh, under fire. Not really all that bad a job. Statistically, it maybe wasn't that impressive. Uh, he had a 41-yarder for his longest, averaged about 31 yards per punch. You'd like to see it up there more in the 36-37-yard uh, average range I think but he was punting under the gun quite a bit last weekend in the fourth quarter 12 minutes to go in the opening period no score Westmar faced with the fourth and 12 and they're on 47 and they're going to kick the ball Chris uh, Blackwell back to receive the kick he's a backup quarterback and a wide receiver high snap Rob White plenty of time to kick it got away a beauty a nice sailing kick Going to hit in front of Blackwell. Westmar going to down it inside the 15 at about the 13-yard line. Nothing wrong with that punt at all. About a 39-yard punt where it's blowing dead finally. And uh, they've got the Warriors deep in the hole. I know when you play a team like Midland with their high-powered wishbone, quick-striking attack, you want to keep them as far away from the end zone as you can make a team that handles the football quite a bit like wishbone teams do to have to drive as far down the field as they can hopefully to make a mistake somewhere along the way in the wishbone set Sanders a quarterback belly ride quick pitch seawall seawall to the 10 to the 15 to the 20 25 got him the first down Tats tackle going to be made by Kurt Westoff for the Eagles that's before a gain of about 13 on the play. It's going to be a first and 10 out to about the 26-yard line. Well, there's that option play that is always the quick striking component of a wishbone attack, and it's something the Eagles are going to have to defense, something they worked hard on this week. A wishbone attack, especially one that really caters to the outside game, really causes you to make some defensive adjustments during the week. Westmar going to have some early movement up front, and they'll be called for encroachment. Quarterback, meanwhile, keeping the football and takes some pretty good pops along the way. Well, check it. He did end up getting a handoff off to Mark Stoley. Stoley was the one that really took some pops. He got stood up behind the line of scrimmage and really took some shots. It's going to be five yards against Westmar. They had some over-anxious defensive linemen that were across the line of scrimmage when the football was snapped. So it's going to bring up a second down and five, or first down and five coming up. That'll move the ball out over the 30 to about the 31-yard line. 11-21 to go in the opening quarter. No score. This is Midland's second possession. Midland with a new-look uniforms here tonight. The black jerseys with white numbers. Gone with the orange look down here in the past years. Westmore in the traveling white tonight. Option play. Pitch out. This is to Harrington. Harrington out over the 35, out over the 40. Now to near midfield. Finally run out of bounds at about the 50. Heck of a move back at about the 40-yard line. And that eluded one would-be tackler. And he was able to turn it into a gain of an additional 10 yards with that nifty move. Mark it right on the 50-yard line and more than enough for the first down. A 19-yard gallop there for Harrington. So they've used all of the backs now. Giving Westmar a look at both sides. And Midland on the move. Midland won 42 to nothing two years ago down here. And Ron Zahorix last year as Westmar's coach. Back to pass. Sanders taking a look. Got it for Blackwell. Got it at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. One on one coverage with Joe Holmberg out there on the left sideline. Perfectly thrown ball by Sanders. I mentioned Sanders has had to fend off. A challenge from a transfer quarterback named Ed Vasek. Now, Vasek's probably a better runner. They say Sanders a better passer. Blackwell took over the split-in spot when Harrington moved into the backfield. Blackwell kind of down on the depth chart as a quarterback, and he just found himself a place to help the ball club and showed that good speed. Got behind 
our best defensive back, Joe Holmberg, and it was a well-thrown ball by Chris Sanders. Just can't put him in there much better than that. Extra point going to be tried by Mark Smith, the freshman out of Gearing, Nebraska. The hold by the quarterback, Sanders. Came with 10.53 to go in the first quarter. This one's right through the middle. That'll make it a 7-0 Midland lead with 10.53 left to go in the first quarter. Okay, Midland's got her teed up on the 35. We've got Skolton and Rob White back to receive the kickoff. And Smith's going to kick it in over in, but it's going to be taken by one of the short men at the 25, up over the 30, 35, 40, out to about the 45-yard line. Good return there. Return got to be made for Westmar by number 26, Heath Fitzsimmons, a freshman out of Ridge, New York. And Westmar's got good field position to start their second drive of the night. Well, that was a nice drive by Midland. A three-play, 87-yard drive capped off by the 50-yard TD pass from Sanders to Blackwell. Quick pitch from Hancher to Kelvin Pierce. Kelvin going to be run down to the line of scrimmage. The game plan was pretty obvious. Coming up to make the hit there from the defensive backfield was Mark Crooks, number 14, freshman out of Waukegan, Illinois. There. Westmar's strategy, pretty simple. Let's attack those areas manned by the freshmen. So far, there hasn't been much success. Don Watchorn, in his 17th year here as coach in Midland, didn't know what he was doing when he put those rookies in there. They were good freshman kids, apparently. So they have handled this left side of the Midland line. And there was a defensive back coming up and making a pretty good read and a pretty good hit. Loss of two. And a second down and 12 from the Westmar 43-yard line. Marcus Hancher. Rolling left, he's going to do a lot of sprint out passing. Fires a strike down there to Rob White, makes the catch for the first down at about the Midland 43-yard line. 14-yard pickup on the play, and Westmar's got him a first down into Midland Real Estate. Hancher's a lot quicker than Kelly McClinic. Got the quicker feet, I guess, than, than maybe a Kelly McClinic, but as Coach Mazel said, although Hancher on the short distance appears to have maybe even a stronger arm than Kelly. Kelly has that touch that uh, only comes with experience and something I guess uh, you can't really teach a young man. He knows what kind of touch to put on his passes, when to fire it in there, when to lay the softer touch in there. But watching Marcus in practice this week, he does seem to have a throw a very catchable ball. Split backs, belly ride, Hancher on the keeper. Hancher inside the 40, inside the 35, down about the 33-yard line. So Hancher gives Westmar a little bit of that Midland-type look on the option play, a good running quarterback. On the stop for the Warriors, number nine. That's where Marcus is going to be valuable running that option. Because of those quick feet, that's what makes a option quarterback dangerous. People that can uh, really be a threat to break it and cut back across the green. Ball on the Midland 33-yard line. And it's going to be second down at about one to go. Picked up about nine in the play. Hancher rolling right. Run pass option. Fires it incomplete. Trying to hit... White on the right sideline. Coverage was there, but the pass had it been uh, up just a little bit. Probably would have been hauled in for the first down. Now it's third down at about a yard. That was a good passing down. Westmar ran a pretty safe route as long as she wasn't underthrowing. Hobart into the ball game with the play. 9.34 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 Midland. Midland scoring on their second possession on a 50-yard pass play from Sanders to Blackwell. They'll hit you with a long one, lull you to sleep with that option, and then hit you with a long pass. Play action. Hancher back, throwing long. Incomplete, trying to hit Shipley. Shipley coming off that tight end and uh, nearly getting loose in the secondary. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and he had the secondary beat the pass just off the fingertips. Coverage back there by Sam Gunyard. Junior was an all-district player last year. He's in his senior season out of Washington, D.C. Fourth down and a yard to go now. I would believe Westmar would be in four-down territory. And they're going for it. Pierce and Hill going to go with a very wide split in the backfield. Hancher on a quarterback sneak. has got a first down just inside the 30. Well, they tried to get that Midland defense spread out by splitting the back so wide, and it apparently had some of that type of effect because Hancher, with a quick count up in the line, was able to sneak forward for a gain of about three or four. 
Going to mark it right on the 30. Gain of three. And it's first and 10. Westmar's drive continues. Hancher's got a little confidence. Seems like he's settled down a little bit now. It's his first collegiate quarterbacking role for Westmar. Play action. Drops back. Takes a look. Now he scrambles to the right side. Now he scrambled back to the other side. Gives ground all the way back to near the 50. Now he's on the move. Whoa, what a hit. Throws downfield for Skolton. He's out of bounds. The catch will not count. And we got a player down hurt. Just that uh, freshman defensive end. Officials time out for an injured player. It's Jim Granger out of Omaha. I believe he got a knee. He was the one that got nailed on a crack back. One of those linemen peeled back and nailed him good. And got him down in the knee area. And I'm sure there's going to be the first injury of the ball game. That bot Marcus the time to unload the football of that crack back block. Just under nine minutes to go in this first quarter. Seven to nothing. It's Midland. And we've got an injury timeout. This gives us, give us a chance to mention some of the people that help bring you Westmar football each and every Sunday night on cable channel 20. People like the Lamar's Beauty College, Plymouth Plumbing and Heating, Augie's, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drug, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penny, and b &H Tire. Granger got up and uh, came off walking under his own power, so hopefully the injury may be just a little bit of a hyperextension. There's the give off tackle to Hill, and Hill going to carry in that dive hole to near the 25-yard line. I believe uh, Greg Miller, freshman from Blair, came in there to handle that defensive end that spot. He's a big guy. He's six foot six, two hundred pounds, big string bean. So they go yet to another freshman. They handle that DN. Picked up about three. It's third down, seven to go from the 25-yard line. And Westmar knocking on the door. They are in Mike Morey field goal range, but would love the seven up there to tie this ball game. 8:24 to go, first quarter. Rolling right, Hancher. Got plenty of time. Throws Colton wide open. Touchdown! Right there. 25 yarder. He don't throw him any better than that. That was right on target. Stride for stride. Westmar flooded the right end zone, right side of that end zone with two receivers. And Hancher found the more open of the two and fired a perfect bullet. Stride for stride. And Scolton out of Yankton makes the catch. Westmar's second scoring pass of the 1987 season, the first TD pass for Hancher. And Westmar's just an extra point away from tying this one up with 8.15 to go. So that's a good answer to the Midland touchdown. Come back and put one on yourself. Remember, they did convert a fourth down on this drive to keep it alive. The snap, the place down by Holmberg, and this one is no good. Hit the upright and bounced away. Midland still leads it 7-6. Play 55 yard drive, but unfortunately, Westmar didn't match the entire results that Midland got. The extra point just wide right hit the right upright. Kickoff going to come down to Harrington at the 10 to the 15 20. Hurdles the body to the 25 30, 35 40, 45, and out near midfield before Mike Rogers runs him down. Buck Rogers saving the touchdown. They had one more man that had him hinned on on the sidelines, otherwise, it would have been off to the races. Harrington. With a nice uh, leap over a couple of tacklers back at about the 20 and it's setting loose down that sideline. He got to the wall after that. A nice return. Hard return by Harrington and Midland takes over at their own 48-yard line. Sanders, the quarterback, caught on the long count, got him set in a wishbone. Straight ahead to Stoley, the fullback. Stoley breaks one tackle but meets some resistance from several other Eagles. Robert Johnson maybe had him underneath. Freddie Anderson, freshman out of uh, New York, Long Island. Came in there, make a hit on him. And I believe it was Westoff in there after that also. Linebackers really converged on the play. Freddie Anderson making his official start here tonight. We understand that we gave uh, Freddie credit for being in the ballgame last week when it was his jersey that got into the game on Kevin West or on uh, Kurt Westoff's back. So. <laughs> He is in here officially wearing his own jersey tonight. Sanders back to pass, throws for Blackwell, incomplete. Joe Holmberg put the lick on him after the catch. Well, I guess if you're going to pick somebody to wear your jersey, you might as well pick a Kurt Westoff to <laughs> come in there and wear it, wear it well. Make you look good anyway if you're going to get your name 
called on the television coverage here. Not really actually be in there. He'll make you look good probably. Seven to six. It's Midland on top by an extra point. Morey is now three for four kicking extra points this year. Third down at about eight to go. There's the give inside. Fumble. Westmar may have it. Stoley was jarred loose from the football. It's uh, Dan Crotzel up off top of the pigskin. And Crotzel's given Westmar the football at midfield. So after that long kickoff return by Harrington, it all went for naught because Westmar's defense bowed their necks and dug in and held at midfield and have got it back for the offense. Westmar will take over in their own 49-yard line. Eagles line up with split backs, split receivers to both sides. The pro set behind Marcus Hancher. Hancher back to pass over the middle. That's going to be, whoa, what a hit. Shipley with a nice catch, and boy, was he up in it. He bounced right back up from it. That was a big-time hit from the defensive secondary. Sam Gunyer, that's their experience in the backfield. He hit Shipley blind side. That's that old deadly slant in over the middle that receivers are tested by. That's the measure of test for him. Shipley going to trot off of there. He's a tough kid. Not many would have bounced back up from that hit. Running that slant over the middle, and then somebody catches you from the back side, your blind side. He hit him about knee high. He could have had a knee injury off of that, too. First and 10 for Westmar to the 35. Back to pass. Hancher is in trouble. And he'll be uh, fumble the football, I believe. Nope, they're going to call it down. Hancher complaining a little bit that maybe there was some piling on. Number 90, Greg Miller. Got a little uh, extracurricular back up field, too. These two don't like each other. I think you get the point as this one goes along that there is a good rivalry here. And there's always a few heated tempers, I think, as this evening goes on in this Midland-Westmar matchup. 6.20 to go in the first quarter, and Westmar trying to take their first lead, trailing 7-6. to six. Pro set with receivers split to both sides. That's sack all the way back to the Westmar 40, or to the uh, Midland 48. Hancher back, throws the screen, hits Kelvin Pierce. He's to the 50, 45, 40, cuts back, 35, and he'll be short of the 30, down at about the 33-yard line. Tackle going to be made, I believe, by number 48, Larry Goodman, junior out of Sioux City. I believe that'd be an East High product. Little screen to the left side. Hancher showing his cool here in the early going. Picked up about 15 on the play, but it's not quite to first down yardage. Third and about nine after that long quarterback sack. Five and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Good to have you with us on Cable Channel 20 this evening. Be your spot for Westmar football throughout this 1987 season. Hancher on the delay, going to give to Hill. And Charles inside the 30, short of the first down, to about the 26. They are in the middle of the field, so we might see Mike Morion to try the field goal at this point. No wind at all tonight. It's perfectly still evening. Beautiful sunset here in Nebraska. Down Couldn't and ask for a more pleasant football the, setting. And I know Blue others that have come down through the years to Fremont can remember when this was played toward the end of the season, oftentimes the season ending ball game, and it was extremely cold and oftentimes played in some snow. A few years ago, they didn't move it to the front part of the schedule. It has made it certainly a better climate type situation. Westmar's going for it, fourth and a long two. Hancher rolling left, looking for the sticks. He'll get the first down. Dives for the sidelines. He looked for a pass receiver, had him covered, got everybody sucked into the middle, so he decided to take his chances on the left sideline, and I believe he got to the first down sticks. That's two conversions of fourth downs tonight by Westmar as Coach Randy Schmazel showing his confidence in this offense, even though they got a new quarterback in there tonight. First, down First and 10 at the 24-yard line. Picked up about nine on the play. Well, picked up about four on the play, I should say, and it was enough for the first down. There's Hill. Hill going to carry inside the 20 to about the 19. Might have been a fumble again, the way they're scrambling in there after it. Ball carrier number 32, Charles. Going to spot it on. It looks like about the 18-yard line. On the stop for the Warriors. Picked up about six on the play. And it brings up a second and four. And we're nearing the four-minute mark now in this first quarter. Seven to six. 
Midland by an extra point. But West Bar on the move for the second straight time. There's the give to Hill. Hill blasting inside the 15 to about the 13 and flags fly. Should be it up for a first down if the penalty doesn't go against the Eagles. Area number 32, Charles. Yeah, they're throwing it in the vicinity of uh, where the contact was made of the ball carrier holding the initial call against Westmeyer. Kind of hope for maybe a face mask. Won't be the case though. This is going to take the gain away. Next week, Westmar back home. They play host to Dana College. Vikings, of course, one of the three teams that beat Westmar last year and a thriller down to Blair, so Westmar will have some revenge. Team comes back to Nebraska on the 26th of September down to Creek to play Doan and then homecoming on October 3rd, Concordia out of St. Paul. Uh, moving into the stadium the for Westmar's home game. First weekend in October. That'll move the ball back to the 25, holding the call against Westmar. Second down and looks like about 12 to go for a first down. Seven to six. It's Midland by one. Westmar trying to take their first lead of the night. Option play. Nope, check it. It's a run now for Hancher. Throws over the middle, incomplete. Sculton had broken free right over the middle. And the pass was underthrown. Hancher threw it off the wrong foot, and it took just enough off of it. It didn't quite get downfield to him. Hancher, I think, has already shown you his cool under fire, though. Nothing wrong with this kid. He's a different type of quarterback than Kelly McClinic. Gives you a different type of element. But nothing wrong with the arm, and he's been able to pick out his receivers. I guess that was the biggest thing that the coaches were a little fearful of, that maybe his reads would be prone to make a mistake or two. So far, it hasn't been the case. He's throwing for the touchdown pass. Third down and 11. Answer on the quarterback. Keeper to the 20. And down there, he'll only get about five on the play. Maybe not even five. That's quarterback draw they put in specifically for Marcus to take advantage of his quick feet and his good running ability. Joe Holmberg's coming on, so that must mean field goal time. It's Mike Morey is going to try one from about, uh, well, we'll see where he puts the tee down. Looks like he's going to spot it at about the 28, so it's going to be a 38-yard try with three minutes left to go in his first quarter. Westmar could take a lead with the successful conversion. Morey is one for one in field goal tries. This one is going to get long enough and in there. It's good. 39-yarder. And Westmar goes in front nine to seven. Well, the last time Westmar won down here was back in... 1981 on a Dave Trado field goal, as I recall, 13 to 10. So field goals have been important in trips down here to Fremont. Westmar hasn't uh, won down here now for the last two trips to Fremont, Nebraska. Some of the other people that are helping bring you football tonight on Cable Channel 20 behind the eight ball, First National Bank, Balmer Shoes, TJ's Antiques, Susan Mill Standard, the Lamar Savings Bank, the Lamar's Truck Haven Cafe, Curtis Pharmacy, Adler's, and Williams and Company. Well, Westmar overcame several bits of adversity on that drive, still managed to take the lead with a field goal. And the kickoff by McPartland's going to be off to the left and out of bounds, so they'll bring it back and kick it from five yards further back, which will make this from the 30. Nine to seven, Westmar's taking their first lead. Westmar overcame a quarterback sack. They overcame a holding penalty. And eventually, in nine plays, got a field goal out of it from near midfield after the fumble recovery by Kratzel. Turned out to be a 39-yard field goal for Mike Morey. He's two for two on field goals. That's a good weapon to have, and he's a left-handed side wheeler, and he's going to be an important factor offensively for the team. So Midland moves up their kick return team. They've got Harrington. And it looks like Seawall back to return the kick, standing back at about the 15-yard line. Remember, it's Skyler night here. They're kind of honoring the folks on both rosters and the two coaches that have Skyler central ties in Nebraska. Kickoff taken by Seawall. Back to the 20, 15, or to the 25, 30, 35, and back to about the 38. Tackle going to be made on the specialty team. See number 49 and down to the very bottom 
Uh, number 10. That's uh, can Todd Peterson in there to make the tackles on that kickoff. And Midland takes over at their own 37 yard line. Option play. Sanders keeping. Robert Johnson put a good lick on, and Kratzel rides him to the turf along with the help of uh, Wayne Utick. Boy, did Johnson put a shoulder pad lick on him. Kratzel was kind of holding him stationary, and then Robert Johnson come up, and you could hear the pop clear up here into the press box. A gain of one will make it second. 219 left to go in the first quarter. Westmar leads 9 to 7. They've scored on two of their three possessions here in this quarter. Midland scoring at a long pass play. Westmar's done a pretty good job of shutting down the option. Sanders with a long count. There's the option. Pitch out. Harrington. Harrington to the 40. 45. Side steps uh, would be tackler to the 50. And right near midfield, he'll have it up for the first down. Gain of about well, they're going to mark it back to the 47. So just about an eight yard gain. It's third down, less than a yard to go for the first down inside the last two minutes of the opening quarter. Split receiver to the left from the wishbone. Pitch out. Here's Seawall. Seawall to the 45 50, 45 40. Into Westmar Real Estate down to the 33 yard line. Oh, he got into the secondary quick. Some excellent blocks back out here on the flat. And a big gainer that's going to net him a first down. 15 yard pickup on that play, and it's got the football down on the Westmar 34 yard line. From the wishbone set, split receiver Blackwell wide to the right side. There's the give to Stoli inside. Stoli at fullback, going to be taken down after Our just a yard or two gain. Utick and Kratzel. And Freddie Anderson up there from the linebacker spot to help make the tackle. Anderson. Freddie given as a strong safety in the starting lineup, but actually playing a third linebacker tonight. Kind of playing a 5-3 look to help slow down this wishbone, give you a few more people to the flanks, too. It's a defense they put together for last year's Midland game, and it worked for an upset. Second down at about eight. Sanders on the keeper, and he'll slip and fall at the 30. And he only get about a yard or two. And a third and six coming up to try and keep this drive going for Midland. Inside the last half minute of this first quarter, could be the last play of the period. Third down and about seven to go for the Midland first down. Wishbone set, split receiver to the right. Let's see if they go airborne. Option play. There's the pitch out. Harrington, Harrington, hemmed in. Down he goes. Good defensive in play on the far side for Westmar. Mark McLeod turned it all in. Westoff was there. Got a good pursuit angle from a linebacker spot and made the stop. It's fourth down. They still need about six for the first down. The stop made at the 30-yard line. And time has expired of the first quarter. It's 9-7, to seven. Westmar. Being brought to you this Sunday evening by Sweet 16 Lanes, Sneaks and Grubs, Custom Interiors, Evans Clothing, Godfather Pizza, Arnold Motor Supply, Steel Ford, Schuster Grain, Wells Blue Bunny, Country Kitchen, Reardon Auto, and Vern Anderson Equipment. Ball just inside that 30-yard line at about the 29, and Midland knocking on the door. They're going for it on fourth down at about six. A big defensive stand for Westmar right here. It's a big play in his first half. Gives to Harrington misdirection. He's into the secondary. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. 29 yards on fourth and six. Ran the motion to the right, came back on a little misdirection, worked off a trap inside, and he had, of course, a lot of people up there playing close to the line of scrimmage. So once he got into the secondary, there wasn't many people that he had to beat, and he's got that good foot speed. And he really wasn't touched after he penetrated the line of scrimmage. Popped off one would-be tackler and bounced to the outside, and it was a foot race and no contest. So Midland jumps back in front. We've got a seesaw scoring battle, 13-9. And Midland trying to add the point after. Sanders trying to uh, hold her for Mark Smith, who was successful on his first attempt. Snaps good, place downs good, and the extra point splits the crossbar. So 14 to 9. Midland shot back in front on a 29 yard scamper on fourth down by Scat back. back deep for Westmar, standing at about their own 15. Well, that was a seven-place, 63-yard drive for the Warriors, scoring early in the second quarter to regain the lead. Kickoff going to be taken by Skolton. 
Stolton out over the 30, out over the 40, now to the 50, 45, 40, and he'll carry to the 35, finally run out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. There's Westmar, one of Westmar's faster people, coming back strong the other way, and that's going to be a return of close to 53 yards for Stolton. The number wasn't anything too fancy. They had kind of a middle return, and the one thing there, he came to the middle. The one thing there, and he popped to the outside. Some of the Midland kids hadn't taken a very good pursuit angle, and Skolton was able to get around some of those people, and it was a foot race. Only pursuit angles, eventually on downfield, saved it from being a touchdown. Westmark takes over at the Midland 33. Marcus Hancher in there at quarterback. Going to give to Kelvin Pierce. Pierce going to be hit hard at the 30. Meeting him at the point of attack was number 17, Steve Warden, freshman out of York, Nebraska, first of all. And he got some other black shirt help immediately thereafter. Marcus Comes Hancher. Shipley into the ballgame with the play from Hancher. And Neil Hall will check out of there. They'll check it. Rob White going to apparently go with the two tight end look. Well, they'll go from the wishbone set with Hobart playing the up back. 14 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. Quick pitch, Pierce getting to the outside. Pierce with a little juke step. And he ain't gonna get anything on this. They've got her pretty well run down to the wide side of the field. He'll get to the 29 and that'll be good for about a yard. Kelvin Pierce. On the stop of the Warriors, number 14, Mark Crooks. Crooks was up there from a cornerback spot, but running good pursuit was uh, Pop Mueller. Well, now we've got an unsportsmanlike conduct call against Westmar. It's going to take some yardage off of this even further. Well, he'll be marked off back to the 44. Boy, nothing can break a drive down quicker than major penalties. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Back to pass. Hancher got Shipley out there open, but he can't hit him. Marcus in the vicinity of those receivers, but now just missing his target. Threw a nice touchdown pass to Skolton earlier, but the receivers are getting open. They're working some nice patterns into the secondary, and they are getting open. And I think you're going to see Marcus going more and more to the air. They're having troubles running against this big front wall to the Warriors. Fourth down and about 20 to go for the Westmar first down. They'll be punting the football on this drive that had so much promise. Fizzle. Now White just managed to get it out of there after a bad snap, and he fumbled it. Westmar had people down there waiting for the ball to come down when the ball came down and Hit one of our coverage people in the back. Uh, Mike Marley was down there, freshman out of St. Petersburg, Florida, and hit him right in the back of the jersey. And that's where it'll be down. So Westmar will bring the defense on. Midland back inside the 20 at about the 17-yard line. Tina Hankey dropped there, but one of the officials, they waved that off. I think he was going to call that he needed to give the receiver room to catch the ball, but he was unknowingly hit from behind by the punt, so it's not much the coverage people can do about that, so they did wave the flag off as they thought the thing through a little bit. So Midland, 83 yards away from the end zone, take over. Offensively leading at 14 to nine. Boy, it's been a good one, back and forth. 13 and a half to go before halftime, and it's been an action-packed first half. Option play, Sanders keeps it, slips and falls at the 20. He'll get three. Three on the play for number three, Chris Sanders. Robert Johnson up to make the, on the, stop the hit Eagles. for Westmar, but Sanders fell down, Anderson. basically stopping the play himself. Second and seven for the Warriors. This is uh, Midland's season opener, incidentally, tonight. So they had some bugs to work out, some new people in some key spots. Kind of expected to get off to a ragged start. From the wishbone set, it's second and seven. Option play, left side. And the quarterback, Sanders, again, carries for about a yard. Again, kind of a slip stop, that play. Sanders having a heck of a time cutting back up inside. Going to be a third down, and still basically 70 yards to go over the first down. Coming in to play wide out is Eric Pinkall. He's out here wide right for Blackwell in the Midland lineup. Sanders faced with a third and seven. Back to pass, play action. Throws one out here in the vicinity of Johnson, the tight end, the pass was high. He got his receiver hung out to dry. Westmar obliged by punishing him and on out of bounds. Pass was overthrown. Seeloff put a good lick in the breastbone and Frenchie Holmberg was there and also Robert Johnson out there covering up. So it's fourth down and seven. 
Westmar played some good defense. They should come out of this with pretty reasonable field position. Well, back to do the punting. Of course, he'd be a threat to run. Going to hammer this one out here. Nice lazy punt. Going to be taken by Sappert. Fumbles. Falls on it at the 45. Boy, he had some running room, too, if he could have hung on. Took his eye off of it, I think, for a moment to check where that running lane was going to be. And it cost him the catch. That was a punt of about uh, 37 yards. No return. Brings him up first and 10 to the Westmar 44. There's Hill. Hill again to the outside. 45. Hits and fumbles. Midland says they've got it. Ball popped out of there. Was it after the fact? Apparently not. First and 10 to the Warriors. Here's a big break. Warriors lead it 14 to 9 with 11.47 to go in the first half. See if they can capitalize. Westmar's got to dig in defensively. Here's Sanders and the keeper carries inside the 40 to about the 39. Frenchie Holmberg and Kurt Westoff were there to help make the top stop. Flag down on the Midland side of the football, and very likely this yardage will be lost. Personal foul going to be the call against the Warriors. This is going to be marked off against them. Well, that's a 15-yard penalty. Moves the ball back to the Midland 46. Personal foul against the Orange and Black. And now it's a second down. 25 yards to go. Back to pass. Sanders taking a look. Steps up into the pocket. Tripped up. Otherwise, he was going to find some running room. So he was ready to break into the open. And I believe it was... Uh, we'll check the number to get it. I believe it was Wayne Udick that tripped him up. Just got him with the shoelaces. Stoley, the fullback, is going to come limping out of there. And Ryan Richardson hustles in, a junior out of Blair, to play the fullback spot. Picked up about five yards, and they're just across the 50 to the Westmar 49. I mentioned our sidekick, Keith Brown, now with us tonight. He came down with some pneumonia this week, so hopefully Keith will be back for the Dana game next week. And anyway, we've got a break in the action, a timeout taken by the Warriors. Uh, Newble Chevrolet helping bring you Westmar football this year on cable channel 20. Cruz and Cruz, CPA, Sod's Bar and Grill, Bucky's Foxy's, uh, Buck, Bucky and Foxy's Highlight, Timmy's Cafe, Jeans Plumbing and Heating, Kitchens Incorporated, Pizza Hut, Hot Top Jewelry, Taylor Auto, Joe's Movie House and Appliance in Video City. Third down at about 15 to go for the first down from the Westmar 49, Midland of the Wishbone set. No split, or one split receiver out into the right. Sanders back to pass, slips, now scrambles. In trouble, going to throw it away on the sidelines just as he was taken into the sidelines. Good pressure going to be put on by Westmar's Mark McLeod. And also up from the secondary to put a little uh, heat on, or up from that, actually that third linebacker added to the lineup tonight, Brad T. Crotzel. So fourth and 15, and Midland's going to try and put Westmar in a hole in the punting game. So the turnover didn't cost Westmore anything. A personal foul penalty stopped Midland. And this has become a defensive standoff at midfield now. Midland leading it 14 to 9 with 10.56 to go and a half. Been a long first half. Blackwell back to punt. Westmar playing for the return. Joey Holmberg going to make the catch at the 16. And he'll go down. Flags fly all over the place. I think every referee threw a flag on that play. So something was pretty obvious to one and all. Ball taken by number three, Joey Holmberg. It's going to be the call against Westmore on the punt return, and that takes it half the distance to the goal line. So they're on the seven and a half yard line. That's their worst field position of the night. Hancher back into the end zone to let her fly. Down the field, Skolton wide open. 40, 50, the foot race is on, and he's got speed. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. There you go, your longest touchdown play of the year. 93 yards, Hancher to Skolton. He slipped in behind the secondary, and he was as open as five, six, seven yards worth. And that was a perfect strike by Hancher. Oh, baby. Well, that'll be our, what, our third lead change of the night. Westmar's in front, 15-14. Morey going to try to add the extra point. So it went a little bit to the right, but it was enough through that they're going to call her good with 10.32 to go in the first half. 16-14, Westmar. McPartland, freshman out of Sheldon, has her teed up. Well, that was the first play from 93 yards away. The penalty didn't hurt at all. Hancher to Skolton for the second time tonight. 
kick return by Harrington from the 13, 15, 20, 25, and look out, 30. Up in at about the 35. Nice open field tackle for Westmire by number 49, Todd Peterson, on the kickoff return. Midland's own 34-yard line with 10 and a half left to go in the first half. A lot of action in this first five minutes of the second quarter. There's the keeper by Sanders. And he'll run right into Freddie Anderson, that freshman out of Wyatt Ash, New York. And he'll carry to the 39 for a pickup of five. It's second down and five. Now they're going to call it a gain of four, so make it second down and six as they mark it at the 38. In the wishbone set, split receiver to the right, collision to the backfield, going to throw it here to Blackwell, juggles, juggles, and he'll catch it on one hop, and McLeod going to drop him back inside the 25 to the 23. Boy, did that one backfire. I think it was actually a lateral, so it was a loose football. He threw it back behind the line of scrimmage, and that one was a mess from the very beginning. As of about 10 yards. Going to make it a third down at about 20 to go. Give on the misdirection. Harrington pops out of it. It's the touchdown play right here. 35, not quite to the 40. The secondary stops things. Robert Johnson from the linebacker spot. And uh, up from the safety spot, Frenchie Holmberg to make the save. Those two hadn't run him down. And it went off to the races again for Doug Harrington. That was the play they ran the touchdown for earlier, it looks like. And that's going to bring up a fourth down and seven. And it's going to be punting time for the Midland Warriors. Blackwell going to fake it, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Got a first down into Westmar territory to the 42-yard line. Well, we're seeing it all in this ballgame tonight. Any for an 18-yard run on the fake punt. Got to mention earlier he would be capable of doing that. He's got that good speed, good all-around athlete. The Warriors are pulling out all of the stops here on opening night. Trailing now 16-14, but they're on the move with eight minutes left to go in the first half. Option play. Now Sanders going to have a back look to pass. Saluted Kurt Westoff. Throws downfield. Intercepted. Picked off downfield by Westmar. I believe it's Seal. I know Frenchie Holmberg makes the interception at the 10. He's back out over the 20 to the 25. That was a nice play by Frenchie Holmberg. He stuck with it all the way, kind of the tip drill. Went off the shoulder pads of the intended receiver, Johnson. And Frenchie, with good coverage, able to take it off the shoulder pads for the interception. Westmar out to the 23-yard line. Kelvin Pearson motion to the left, going to give to Charles Hill, and he'll go nowhere. Boy, that was stuffed up behind the line of scrimmage. And they're going to lose about a yard. Second down and 11 to go for Westmar. 7-11 on that scoreboard clock before halftime. It's 16-14 Westmar. Hands are back. Takes a look. Throws for Whitey. Make a scooping catch. No, he didn't hang on. Right against the Midland sidelines to say he didn't hang on. Went down to a knee. Juggled and lost it. Coverage out here by three different uh, Warriors. We have uh, Warden out here covering up on the flat. And also uh, Shanks and Ashy. Back to pass on third down to 11. Goes in the screen and it's dropped. Try to go to Charles Hill on the right sideline and Charles couldn't hang on to it. So it's a punting situation. Westmar, after stopping Midland with the interception, will turn it over on four downs. And on to do the punting again, Rob White. Rob White back on fourth and 11. Punt from back inside his own 10 yard line. Blackwell back near midfield to receive the punt for Midland. Got away, a uh, short one, but it's got good high arc to it. Takes a good favorable Westmar roll. And Westmar's gonna really get a benefit out of this one. It'll be stopped inside the 40 at about the 39 yard line. That one's gonna cover it about 38 yards. That's a uh, big time punt in anybody's uh, uh, rule book. And Westmar will take it. Midland out to the 39 yard line now. First and 10 there. 61 yards away from the end zone with 642 left to play. First half in the wishbone set. Sanders going to give up the middle to the fullback. And again, that new fullback is Ryan Richardson, a junior kid out of Blair, Nebraska. That play, second down, seven to go from the Midland 43-yard line. Split receiver to the left side in the wishbone set. Sanders got him set down. Belly rides it inside. Now on the option, there's the pitch out. Seawall given ground. Frenchie Holmberg runs him to the sidelines and out over there on the 45-yard line. And that's going to be good for only a couple of yards. I think I saw a flag thrown into the Westmar sidelines. Maybe a late hit. Let's hope not because that'll 
give them the first down. Maybe they were just throwing a hat in there to mark where the ball went off the playing field. Flag, somebody has just been throwing their cap in there to mark where the ball left the playing field, so they get the mark right on the out-of-bound stripe. Third down at about five. There's a get of the fullback. Richardson, boy, what a pop down field, but he's got a first down. That quick opener, and he finally ran in Freddie Anderson inside the 50 to Westmar's 47-yard line. That was a gain of about 12, or about uh, eight on the play, and it's going to be good for a Midland first down. The move again, 5.39 left to go before halftime. Wishbone set, split receiver, wide left. Play action fake, Harrington going to go right up that dive hole on the left side inside the 45, about the 43-yard line. Coming up, McLeod to make the hit. And Freddie Anderson there. Going to bring up a second down at about eight for the Warriors from the West Bar 44. Seesaw battle, West Bar leading at 16-14. Back to pass, Sanders got a look downfield. Johnson makes the catch to 30. Big tight end to the 25, still on his feet. Dives inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. How's that for perseverance? He broke one, two, three tackles along the way and got him a first down. The game going to be good for about 31 yards. He averaged about... Uh, 14 yards per pass catch last year for the tight end spot. Didn't get all of the credit for that. They're going to remark it back at the 22. I don't think he actually went down back there. He touched his hand down and was able to get a little extra yardage on some good effort, and they didn't give it all to him. There's a give to Ryan Richardson up the middle, and the fullback last to about the 18. That's where probably that original gain should have been awarded Johnson on that last play, but Richardson gets it back, gain of four, it'll be second down, a gain, of uh, gain of about three, and second down and seven coming up for the Warriors. Inside the last four and a half minutes now of the half, Sanders in the wishbone set, calling the cadence, option play, pitch out, Seawall, they got him down in the backfield, Joey Holmberg, read it perfectly and got in there quickly and dropped the pitch man for a big loss back to the 25-yard line. That'll be a loss of about seven. Third down at about 15 to go after that loss. Nice play by Joe Holmberg. That may be the big play of the first half. And this drives in jeopardy of stalling out now. Third and long, back to pass, play action. And this one's intended for Blackwell. Sanders just kind of fires it off the field. Joe Holmberg with perfect coverage there on the strong side wide receiver and had it uh, pretty well handled. I think Sanders just wasted it. Fourth down, about uh, 15 to go over the first down, and they're going to probably try for the field goal. And already on with the kicking tee is Mark Smith, so he'll be trying this one from, uh, it's going to be a long one. Looks like he's going to spot it down at about the 34, 33 yard line. It's going to make it a 44 yard try, I think. Like uh, More like the 40, or 33, so 43 yard try. The snap is high, the timing was off, way off. Smith. Already was into his kicking motion, and he'll kick it way short and way wide left. Smith had already started forward, and the snap just threw him off in the timing, and he didn't get a put into it at all. So that drive stalled out, went awry. Westmar still leading 16-14. Of course, the ball returns to the line of scrimmage, and Westmar takes over in the 26-yard line. Leading by two. 3.44 left to go in the first half. There's the give to Hill. Hill out to near the 30. Taken down short of the 30, about a three-yard gain. Second and seven coming up. Bart checks out. Westmar going to set up in an eye formation. Skolton in, in motion to the left side. Back to pass. Hancher going long. Skolton split the seam again. Hits him with a pass over the middle of the 35. Down to the 30. And another big strike from Hancher to Skolton. Skolton came in motion from uh, right to left. And then went right down the middle of the field and split the seam. They covered 38 yards. Nearly got him off to the races again. Hancher and Skolton have hooked up on two TD passes already. There's the option. Pitch out, Charles Hill, 30. And what a hit at about the 39-yard line. What a collision play, so it's second down and eight. Well, that was quite a pop there between those two as they made contact head-to-head -head over there on the right side. Hancher on a broken play. Now he's ad living. He's going to turn this into a gain, though. Breaks a tackle and finally goes out of bounds at about the 33, stopping his progress with Sam Goodyear to try to put a good lick on, but Brown Hancher with a stiff arm fended off most Marcus of the blow. Hancher. Nine left before halftime, 16-14 Westmar, and they're on the move again. Set up again by a long pass from Hancher to Skolton. 
Quarterback sneak on third and one by Hancher. We'll see as they unstack the bodies. He's got it up for the first down. It'll look initially like he does. As they ran on the quick count, they're going to mark it on the 20. That'll be more than enough. They got a three yard gain, and it's first down for Westmar. 20 yards away from the end zone. Okay, first and 10 for Westmar on the 20 yard line. Hancher back to pass. Takes a look. Now a run right up the middle and go down to the line of scrimmage. I think he was even separated from the football after the fact. John Barton jumped on it. Reimer. Second down, 10 to go. No gain in the last play. And Hancher back off center, taking a look. Straight drop back, throws on the flat out there to Pierce. Pierce going to be taken down for just a yard or two gain. Good coverage on the flat by linebacker Daryl Bloom, junior out of Howells, Nebraska. And move that back to the 20-yard line, so actually no gain. He caught it at the 18, got pushed back to the 20, so it's third and 10. Hancher in trouble. Gives ground, gives ground. Now he's scrambling. Throws back across field in and out of the hands of Rob White. Got a flag down here on the backside also. Flag down back where the quarterback is. I think there's going to be roughing the offsetting penalties. One on each ball club, so we'll do it all over again from the 20-yard line. Third down and 10 to go. Just inside the one-minute mark in this first half. 16-14 Westmar. They may have to settle for another field goal if they don't make a big third down play. Play action, back to pass. Hancher over the middle. Skolton at the one. Hit down short of the goal line. It's first and goal to go for Westmar. Again, Hancher locking up over the middle. Now check it. It's going to be Shipley making the catch, not Skolton. Shipley makes the catch right over the middle. The tight end just running over the middle, finding an open pocket at a perfect strike. First and goal to go, and Hancher's got him set down. Tries the quarterback sneak. No goal as the black shirt swarm him under and pull him back. Second and gold from the one-yard line. Westmar's lining up with no huddle. Down to the last 27 seconds. They are out of timeouts. Reminiscent of that Green Bay Packer game back in the 60s. Bart Starr's quarterback sneak. There's an incomplete pass. Hancher trying to get the clock stops in with a play. He'll split out wide to the left side. We've got Skolton wide out right. Sure, it'll be something up the middle, though. Hancher, no, he is going to back off. Going to throw. Looks. Now scrambles. Throws kind of a side armor. Touchdown. Skolton makes a sliding catch, his third TD catch, but there is flags down. That was just inside the goal line. We'll see what the penalties are all about here. Might have been some interference one way or the other. And the Midland fans reacting that it's going to be against Westmar, so apparently this one's going to be called off. Turns out it was offensive pass interference currently on Skolton, so you lose the down. Yardage is going to be marked off all the way back to the 15-yard line, and Mike Morey is on now to try and salvage three points. Boy, we're inside the one-yard line and can have to settle for three, but we do have the lead regardless of whether this is good or not. Morey's going to send it deep enough into the end zone and accurate enough. Westmar tacks on three more and goes up in front, 19-14, with eight seconds to go in the half. Kickoff is going to be squipped down in the middle of the field, taken by a short man at the 30, 35, out over the 40, to the 41 yard line. Mark Prince is going to make the return down to the last two seconds before halftime. That was a 33 yard field goal by Morey. He's uh, still perfect on the year, three for three, two of them tonight. And Skolton and Hancher are locked up for two TD passes. And time enough for probably one more play here before halftime. Timeout. As Midland takes a timeout. Okay, this will be the last play of the half. 19-14 Westmar, and Midland going to take one more crack. Looks like they're going to send two wide receivers to the right side, so they're thinking about throwing the football, and there's a flag dropped before they can even snap the football. So what is this? And this will be the last play of the half. Sanders comes up over center, looks over the Westmar defense. Westmar playing very deep with the secondary. Back to pass, great drop back. Sanders going to air it out, way downfield for Blackwell. Intercepted by Joe Holmberg at the 10 to the 15, 20. It's going to be a long return, 30, 35, and out of bounds. Whoa, what a cheap shot on the sidelines as he was already run off the field, and Seawall came along and just put a good lick on him. Joey. Holmberg and uh, Scott half ends. Westmar in front, 1914. Here are the people bringing you Westmar College football this evening on Cable Channel 20. 
for Lamar's Beauty College, Plymouth Plumbing and Heating, Augie's, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drug, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penny, B&H Tire, Behind the Eight Ball, First National Bank, Balmer's Shoes, TJ's Antiques, Susan Mill Standard, Lamar's Savings Bank, Lamar's Truck Haven Cafe, Curtis Pharmacy, Adler's, Williams and Company, Sweet 16 Lanes, Neats and Grub, Custom Interior, Evans Clothing, Godfather Pizza, Arnold Motor, Steel Ford, Schuster Grain, Wells Blue Bunny, Country Kitchen, Reardon Auto, Vern Anderson Equipment, Newble Chevrolet, Cruz and Cruz CPA, Sod's Bar and Grill, Bucky and Foxy's Highlight, Timmy's Cafe, Jeans Plumbing and Heating, Kitchen Incorporated, The Pizza Hut, Hotop Jewelry, Taylor's Auto, and Joe's Movie House and Appliance in Video City. And here we go with the second half of tonight's 31st meeting between Midland and Westmar. The kickoff to the Eagles, gonna be taken by Westmar at about the 25, out over the 30, out over the 40, to about the 43 yard line. See who the return man was, one of those short backs, and the return gonna be made by Vernon Bolden. He's a freshman out of New York. In big plays in the first half, Westmar scoring at a 93 yard pass play from, by Mike Morey, a 50 yard pass play from uh, the quarterback Sanders to Blackwell, and Harrington on a 29 yard run for Midlands. Touchdowns in the first half. There's the give up the middle. Good for about five yards for Westmar. Charles Hill pops up the middle for the Eagles. Second down at about six to go as they carry for four. Just underway in the second half. It's 19-14. Westmar in front. Two more field goals. The difference in this ball game. Had three lead changes in that first half. Quite an exciting first 30 minutes of football. A wide slot, Hancher gonna give to Hill. He spins off one hit, and taken down short of the 50 at about the 49 yard line. One of the people getting up off the top of the pile is uh, Greg Miller, freshman that came in early in the ball game due to an injury. Saw the starting fullback for Midland, Stoley, come out of the locker room on crutches, so he'll be finished for the night. Ryan Richardson apparently will be the fullback for the rest of the evening for the Warriors. Westmar was down inside the one just before halftime and had to settle for a field goal thanks to a penalty as the half drew to a close. A pro set for Westmar, split backs. There's Hill again slamming into the middle and he's into Midland Real Estate close to a first down. The all in To the chain, there you can see it. He got it by about the length of the football. So an all important initial first down. Marcus Hancher again, the quarterback for Westmar. Now Kelly McClinic out with an injured abdomen. Charles Hill, about 80% tonight. He bruised a hamstring, took a helmet to the uh, backside of the, th of the upper leg in practice this week, and Kelvin Pierce with a hip pointer. So he's running at less than 100% tonight. There's Hill into the middle. Bounces out of there. Now he's to the outside, 45-40, 35-30, and he's got a Westmar first down. There's a little ad-libbing. Went on the dive inside, and he bounced right back out of there, and scooted to the outside and got a big gainer out of it. All the way down to the 32 yard line, pick up of 15 yards. Charles Hill's biggest run of the night, I believe. Carry up the middle for Westmar and he'll be stopped for only a short gain, got a yard or so. Westmar's not had a whole lot of success popping into the middle. It's been to the outside areas where Midland has one freshman playing a defensive end and two freshman cornerbacks where Westmar's had the most success. So they've really got behind him with a long passing game tonight and had some success there. Here's the Wayne Hobart checking in. Kelvin Pierce comes out of there. Well, we saw Steve Moran before the ball game. Last year's Westmar All-American, 1,000 yard rusher, had three touchdowns to get the Eagles off to an early lead in this ball game a year ago and led Westmar to a 21-16 upset. There's Hill to the outside of the 30 to the 25, 20. Westmar first down, he dives inside the 15 and boy, Charles Hill's doing a lot for this drive. So he's gonna take it 
for a, about a 16, 17 yard ramble there, and it's going to be first and 10 at about the 15. Warriors, 12 10 to play, third quarter. Westmar doing this all on the ground so far, and a nice drive that started at their own 43 yard line off the opening kickoff of the second half. Westmar apparently at halftime came up with a few things they wanted to exploit in the second half, and they've done a good job attacking those areas. Pierce and Hill split behind Marcus Hancher in the backfield. There's Hill working that left side over again, be the right side of the middle of the line, and he'll get nothing this time. That was that same dive play that Hill popped back out of there and went to the outside on moments ago for the big gain on this drive. Going to bring up a second down at 11. It looks like he lost about a half a yard. Football just outside of the 15 now. We'll call it the 16 with 11 and a half to go in the third quarter. Good to have you with us on Cable Channel 20. It'll be your spot for Westmar football throughout this 1987 season. From the I formation, Midland going to jump early. Flags fly, so there's going to be offsides. This will be a freebie, and Hill going to take it to the left side and dive to about the 14, 15 yard line. So that's going to make it second and a little shorter. Second down at about six, probably, for the first down now for Westmar. So, in case they mark the ball inside the 15 to about the 11. So, boy, you get five yards easy like that down inside the 20 yard line, and that's always big pluses. Because yards are tough to come by inside that 20 yard line, it seems like. Pierce and Hill split behind Hancher. Roll out. Hancher now ad living. It's broken play, and Hancher going to move to near the 10 yard line. You maybe turn it into a yard or two game to get a flag down to the line of scrimmage. So you guess procedure or encroachment there on somebody. They're pointing toward Westmar, so I think the five yards is going to go back the other direction, probably. Oh, holding is going to be worse than that. Holding, holding against the Eagles, and that's going to take them back 10 yards on the penalty yardage. So this kind of hurts down in this area, and Westmar stalling out again down there in scoring territory. Boy, they muffed a big chance to get into 12. There's been a tie. Westmar won a year ago, 21 to 16, snapping a four-year drought against the Warriors. Back to pass, Hancher. Going long for Skolton, incomplete. A little contact as the ball was in the air. Again, Skolton kind of pushing off. He was called for offensive pass interference after making what appeared to be a touchdown catch just before the half. And maybe could have been whistled again as he used some hands to push off his defender. But referees called nothing. The pass was uncatchable anyway. So TD passes and a couple of other big gainers. Hancher. Play action fake, takes a look, throws for Shipley, tipped away and incomplete. Junior there to make the touchdown saving, tip away defensively for Midland. And Westmar gonna have to settle again for three points. Maury, perfect on the year, three for three with field goals. Get him on and it looks like put the tee down about the 27 or 28 yard line. We'll see where he looks like about the 27. 37 yard tries, kicked 33 and 39 yard field goals tonight. Joey Holmberg gonna try the going to place it down for him. He did miss an extra point after Westmar's first touchdown. This one is certainly long enough. And no good. Going to miss his first field goal of the year. It was wide to the right. That's the same uprights that he missed the extra point at. So that keeps the score. Kickoff of the second half came up empty. Takes over at the 20-yard line. First and 10 there. We've got Sanders at quarterback. Ryan Richardson now the up back. There's the give to Richardson. He'll break two tackles, spin around, and Trotzel finally takes him down across the 25 of the 26, 27 yard line. That's still the bread and butter of a wishbone. You've got to establish an inside game, keep those people at home so you can skirt the outsides. Westmar has been vulnerable to the flanks tonight on a couple of those pitches, particularly the ones to the left side of Westmar's defense when they pitch to the scat back Harrington. Picked up eight at second down and two to go from the 28-yard line. In motion, flags fly. Going to be some back in motion, I think, against the Warriors. And there's Sanders, the quarterback, keeping for what appears to be a first down, but I think the penalty will wipe it out. Westoff and Freddie Anderson were there to make the hit. Well, it turns out it was against Westmar. Encroachment the call, and that'll give the Warriors the first down. They only got about three on the carry, so they'll take the five on the penalty and get him a first down that route. 1914, it's Westmar in front by five. 
Boy, the way this one's featured big plays tonight, no lead may be safe. And at any moment, lightning can strike in this one. We got two big strike football teams tonight with exciting quarterback play. Sanders for Midland. And Marcus Hancher making his Westmar debut tonight at QB in place of injured Kelly McClinic for Westmar. And he's throwing two TD passes. Westmar said trouble getting the running game on track tonight. Back to pass, little slant in, complete to Blackwell. Right in front of Frenchie and Joe Holmberg. And a sliding catch as Blackwell tried to bust out of there. Boy, if he'd have been able to keep his footing and spin out of there, both Frenchie and uh, Joey had fallen down on the play, and Blackwell would have been gone down the sidelines. He got the on the move again. Two first downs on this drive. It started back at the 20. Nearing the nine-minute mark in quarter three. Westmar up by five. There's the give to Ryan Richardson, the fullback. Boy, this guy's very big, but he just keeps turning and driving, and that's just a prototype Midland fullback play through the years. This guy is, uh, you know, gets the size on him. He's only 5'9", listed at 175, and he doesn't even look that big. And <laughs> uh, really hits you hard and keeps those legs turning and driving. That time he backed up field for about three yards after the initial hit. Just short of the midfield stripe, and second down and five. Sanders looks over the... Westmar defense playing a 5-3 tonight. There's some early movement to the backfield. Richardson is going to be called for some early movement. Quarterback kind of went out there on the option play and got no help, and flags are going to fly. Westmar didn't hear whistles, and they're kind of told to make contact until the whistle's blowing dead. And, boy, they took some shots, vicious shots at that quarterback. And I think we're going to see some another flag going to be thrown there after the fact. So somebody said something on top of it all. And this is, I think, all going to go against Westmore. <laughs> Referees talking it over. Well, I didn't hear whistles at the time. The quarterback kind of came out there, and he stopped and then started running again. Westmore kept the pursuit up, took some good shots of that quarterback. Flags flew at that point. I think uh, officials felt there was a little unnecessary roughness. And... Then something was said, and another flag was thrown for that. That definitely was against Westmar. So we'll see as they iron this all out in a little referee's meeting. <laughs> How are they going to mark the yardage off? Westmar's march marching their huddle back already. It'll be a first down any way you look at it. Legal procedure going to be the initial call against Midland. And then, of course, the unsportsmanlike conduct against Westmar. So they're going to take the yardage off against Midland first and then mark the yardage off against Westmar. So there's the illegal procedure. Walked off against the Warriors. Now we're going to see the big yardage marked off against Westmar. This be 15 here. See if they end up marking two different 15 yarders off. There's the possibility of that. There's the unsportsmanlike conduct. Apparently, it's only going to be the one. Could have been two of them, I think. First and 10 to the Westmar 40 yard line as the Eagles dig in defensively. 19 14, they're protecting a five point lead with eight and a half to go, third quarter. And the wishbone set. Split receiver to the right side. Option play, Sanders dives upfield inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Picks up about three. Next week, Westmar home. They're going to be entertaining the Dana Vikings before traveling back here into southeast Nebraska to play Doan down at Crete on the 26th of September and then home on the 3rd, hosting Concordia for homecoming. And we've got the open date the second week in October. We'll go up to Northwestern from there. Second down at about eight to go from the Westmar 38-yard line. Midland in the standard wishbone set. Seawall pops out of there. Seawall breaking tackles all the way up the field inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. Seeloff there to help make the stop along with Freddie Anderson, and that saved the touchdown again. Those secondary people have saved some long gainers tonight. Some of them got away for the big yards, too. First down to the 28-yard line, picked up about... Nine on that play. Seven thirty-three left to go. Third quarter, and Midland's got a march going. And this one started way back at the twenty after the missed field goal. Westmar 
showed as if they were going to come with a blitz. There's the pitch out. Here's Seawall. Seawall to the 25. Stiff arms driven out of bounds by Joey Holmberg at about the 22-yard line. Flag down in the Midland backfield. And this one's going to come back. That was a good gain again, about five yards or six yards. Let's see if we get an initial call here. Going to be... Personal foul, the personal foul against Westmar. Apparently a late head on the quarterback again. Boy, Westmar's killing their own selves this drive for Midland with some penalties. It's a couple of personal foul penalties on this particular driver. Comes Chad Shook into the lineup, and Frenchy Holmberg going to come out of there. Westmar's beeping up the front line a little bit. That's going to move the ball down to the 12-yard line. Boy, a lot of this has been fueled by some big penalty yardage. 7.15 to go in the third quarter. Westmar with a big defensive stand now as they're going to have to grab grass inside that 15-yard line. Midland comes up there getting a little support from their fans here. Nice crowd on a pleasant football evening here on a Saturday in Fremont, Nebraska. There's the give to Ryan Richardson. Ryan fumbles the football, scramble for it. Westmar says they've got it. We'll see who's up off the bottom of the pile. I believe it's Westoff. Kurt Westoff, the Lamar's native, got a big fumble recovery a week ago against Buena Vista and comes up with another here tonight. And that's first and 10 for Westmar at their own eight yard line. The defense comes up with another big play. Well, the PA men gave the credit for the fumble recovery to Seeloff, number 30. Yeah, that was Westoff, number 50. So I'm not sure who gets credit for it. Charles Hill breaks the tackle and then reverses field, but maybe turns it into no gain instead of a loss. That's about all he salvaged out of that. Out to about the 10 yard line. Maybe got a yard on it. Second down and nine. The 647 mark in quarter three. So far, no scoring this period. Both teams on their initial drives of the second half moved down close to Pater. Westmar finally missing a field goal. Midland fumbling inside the 10 after driving almost the length of the field. Westmar in a pro set, split receivers to both sides, and the backs are split behind the quarterback, Marcus Hancher. There's the option. Flag down to the Westmar side of the football, and Hancher on a keeper at about the 13. Procedure going to be the call, so wipe out the gain. The ball moved back to the five-yard line. Boy, this quarter, really, since the midway part of the second quarter, there has been a ton of penalties, and Westmar's piling up some penalty yards. They may be up there in the 100-yard penalty category tonight the rate they're going. Well, we got a break in the action with 6.17 to go third quarter. 19-14 Westmar. Eagle football brought to you this 1987 season on cable channel 20 by the Lamar's Beauty College. Plymouth. Plumbing and Heating, Augie's, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drug, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penney, b &H Tire, Behind the Eight Ball, First National Bank, Balmer's Shoes, and t &J Antiques. Sponsors that say, Go Eagles! Marcus Hancher returns to the Westmar Huddle. For all these penalties, you got to think uh, what a leadership role that Kelly McClinic plays in this offense to kind of keep things under control when things start unraveling. Nothing against Marcus Hancher, but you can't replace that senior leadership sometimes. Kelly McClinic does have that strong leadership quality about him. Hancher back in the end zone, lets her fly down the sidelines. White can't quite get there. White had his man beat. The pass was led a little bit too far down the field, about a step too far. And it would have gone the route had he hit him on the numbers. So that's going to bring up a third down at about 15. And Westmar is going to again be faced with a passing situation as they get the personnel in there. They want to make the big pass play. See a new quarterback warming up here on the sidelines. Uh, Mike uh, Eskins. Throwing the ball a little bit here on the sidelines. That was not the young man that we understood was running number two, so we'll see who quarterbacks next time. Back to pass, Hancher in the end zone, letting her go long. There's Skolton, and it overshoots the mark by about three, four yards. So they're going to have to punt from the end zone. The Midland's going to come out of this with excellent field position again. Penalties break down this opportunity. With 6.04 left to go in the third quarter. Still 19-14. Midland's going to get another good scoring opportunity before the quarter ends. Blackwell is going to be back near the 40-yard line. 
Midland should get this one no worse than midfield, probably in Westmar territory as Rob White steps to the back of the end zone, checking that back line to make sure he didn't step backwards and out of the end zone, which, of course, would be a safety. Kick is high, going to get some good coverage on this. Blackwell going to take it back at his own, back at the Westmar 43, tries to get to the outside, given ground, given ground, and he'll go right on out of bounds. Trent Quick runs him off the field, so actually a yard return. We get a flag down across the field. A lot of yellow flags on the field in this ball game since the second quarter, and it has made this one a real long one so far here down in Fremont tonight. Uh, referees haven't gone to talk to either captain. They're still discussing the situation between themselves. 38-yard hunt for number 88, Rob White. And going to be a foul against the Warriors, it looks like. Still talking it over with Kurt Westoff now. A little break here. Holding going to be the call against the Warriors. That was clear across the field from the return, too. So those are the kind of penalties just driving Coach crazy. Coach Watchhorn expects just a little more discipline than that on his sideline. As Randy Schmazel, sure a little perturbed about some of the yellow flags called against his ball club at times tonight. 52 yards away from the end zone with 5.52 left to go third quarter. Sanders fires a strike over to Blackwell, and he's sent away from the football by... Nice hit from Joe Holmberg. Boy, was that a slam there from the cornerback Holmberg, and it just uh, separated the ball catcher from the uh, pass. That was a nice pass by Sanders. Threw a bullet in there to Blackwell. The contact was timed perfectly, and it jarred the ball out of there, and the pass incomplete. So it's second down, 10 to go from the 48. Boy, that was bone crunching style of tackling there by Joe Holmberg. Pitch out. This goes to Harrington. Harrington taken down at about the 50 yard line. Number 23, Doug Harrington for a gain of two. Nice play over there on the wide side. Frenchy Holmberg coming up there to make a hit, I believe. Frenchy, I uh, guess, told us on press day, the real name is Francois. <laughs> And he got the name Frenchy from uh, the fact his brother couldn't pronounce Francois when he was little, so he called him Frenchy, and Frenchy it's been since then. So that's the story behind Frenchy. And, of course, we'll never forget the job Frenchy did at quarterback a year ago. Flags go down again. Sanders back in the pocket, runs over the referee, and Sanders goes down. The referee goes down. Oswald and McLeod run the quarterback down at the 46-yard line. Well, a referee helped out there. See what the flag's all about. Might again be some yardage to be marked off against the offense, and that'll be the case. Didn't see the initial signal, but it will be. Remember, he did fake one earlier and ran for a first down. You don't normally do that twice in a game, but Westmar is going to have to respect him anyway. Punt's going to be short. And downed at the Eagle 37, 38 yard line. Save of the market. It was not a good punt at all. Parkins Hancher sets the team down at their own 37 yard line. 62 yards, 63 yards away from the end zone. First down. There's a give to Hill. Charles going to be taken down short of the 40 at about the 39. Boy, they just have had a lot of trouble getting a good running game established tonight. And that's the bread and butter of that offense. Been big play passing offense tonight. That's Moved Westmar up and down the field. Marcus Hancher who worked hard in the passing game this week. And I guess when you bring a new quarterback in, someone that's green like Hancher, passing games, the area you worry about the most. 4-11 to go, third quarter. It's been a scoreless period, although there's been threats by both teams. Nobody's been able to get points on. So give it a hill, ball shoots up into the air. And I believe it's going to be Midlands football. Another turnover from the Eagles. There it is. Signal. Gives the ball to Midland. Darrell Bloom comes out of there with a pigskin. I don't know if they're tackling the ball or just some good hard sticks, but all of a sudden that ball shot up in the air. Charles Hill doesn't have a fumbling type reputation, but he's been separated from the football twice tonight. For the Warriors. Inside the last four minutes of the third quarter. Sanders remains a quarterback. 
Back to pass, play action. Swings it out of the backfield behind Seawall. Seawall had a running lane down the left side, too. Yet again. Defense knew they were going to have to play well tonight. The offense beat up as it was. Sanders on the keeper. Sanders going to carry for about eight yards to about the 31-yard line. And now an all-important third down call coming up. Third down, they're going to need a short two. Freddie Anderson coming out. Brad T. Crotzel checks into the lineup for the Eagle defense. They're alternating at that new linebacker spot created tonight with the defense designed to stop the wishbone. Three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, and Sanders sets the team down third and a short two from the wishbone set. Split receiver to the right. Gives to the fullback, Richardson. And he's piled up right on the 30s, so it'll be close. As they unstack the bodies and spot the ball. We'll know then whether he's got it up for the first down. Looks like he's going to be short yet. Football just across that 30, and he's got to get more like to the 29-yard line. I think he's short. And it's fourth down and about a yard to go. They won't even measure it. Going to get a goal line in. Chad Shook checks into the ball game. There's Steve Utesh lumbering out of there. Steve's really beat up. He's got a lot of leg problems right now. So he's limited in the amount of playing time he can be in there. There's the keeper. Sanders has the first down. Fumble! Westbar has got it, I believe. Sanders trying with an extra yardage. He ends up uh, getting the ball taken out of his grasp. Kurt Westhoff has a few words with one of the Warriors, I believe. Chad Shook, the freshman out of Denison, may have jumped on that one. And Westmar has come up with another big turnover of their own after the first down had been achieved. So Westmar takes over at their own 28-yard line. Turnovers and penalties are really playing a big role in this third quarter. And Midland has blown two big scoring opportunities by turning the ball over in Westmar territory here in the third quarter. There's Hancher on the keeper. Hancher going to dive to about the 31. He'll get two or three. Uh, remember last year, eight fumbles and, uh, of course, five recovered by Westmar. Two of them deep in Midland territory allowed Westmar two easy scores early, and they went on to win that ball game 21-16 last year. Second down at about seven to go. Pick up a three. Ball on the 31-yard line. Ball on their own. I hope you're enjoying it tonight on cable channel 20. Don't forget on Monday morning or Monday noon hours, you can enjoy the Eagle League backers get together and watch Westmar game films. Hancher back to pass. Down the middle, there's Skolton again. In and out of his hands. Down at about the 30. Coverage by Gunyard, but he had Gunyard beat again, and it was almost another long bomb. From their own 31 yard line. Hancher back to pass, big rush, setting up the screen. Going to go out here to Kelvin Pierce. Kelvin to the 30, 35, and I don't think he's going to quite get to the first down stick. He'll come up about a yard shy. Nearly got that one all botched up in the backfield on the screen with the lineman going out to set up the blocking wall. Kelvin ran into one of his linemen and got blocked off in the ball. He just was able to get around that lineman in order to catch the ball. Looks like this one's going to be a score to standoff. Unless something big happens here in the last... Minute 40, Rob White back to do the punting. And he'll get away probably one of his poor kicks tonight, unless it takes a good roll, and it will. It's going to take another 15-yard roll downfield, and there'll be no return. Trent Quick going to be down there to touch it down at about the 21-yard line, so that one's going to measure about uh, 40, 41 yards with no return. Turned out to be one of his better kicks of the night. Actually, the Warriors take over at their own 21-yard line. Got a minute 28 to go. First half of the third quarter with this one. Option play. Quarterback's going to slip and fall. Sanders back at about the 18-yard line. Boy, he's had more trouble getting his footing in this one this evening. Ball carrier number three, Chris Sanders. Sanders has slipped several times, and that's going to be a loss of about three on the play, and it's going to be a second and 13 back at the 18. Makes it second down and 12 yards to go for the Warriors. Going to be inside the one-minute mark as the Warriors break huddle and come up to the line of scrimmage. Time enough for maybe another play or two. No scoring in this quarter, but we've had both teams close. 
Warriors fumbling twice, deep in Westmar territory. Westmar missing a field goal. Sanders back to pass. Throws to his tight end, Johnson. Short of the first down, but the catch made at the 27-26 yard line. Six yard pass reception for number 84. Steve Good for Johnson. about eight yards, and it's still going to leave him about five yards short of the first down. Westhoff up to make the hit from a linebacker spot. Hurts put a lot of hits on people tonight. I guess he's going to be in there close to your leaders on the tackle charts. Another big third down play coming up. This will be it for the third quarters. We're down inside the last 10 seconds. Sanders with a long count. Going to give him the second man through. I believe it's Seawall. And Seawall going to carry it about the 28, 29 yard line. So it'll be fourth and about three as we go to the fourth quarter. 19 14. Westmar still clinging to the lead on two Mike Morey field goals. Teams change ends here. We do have a Westmar player injured on that last play of the third quarter. And they're helping him to his feet. Looks like Dan Crotzel. And he's trotting off, so I think he'll be back. Some of the people bringing you Westmar football, Susan Mill Standard, Lamar's Savings Bank, the Lamar's Truck Haven Cafe, Gertis Pharmacy, Adler's, Williams and Company, Sweet 16 Lanes, Neats and Grubs, Custom Interior, Evans Clothing, Godfather's Pizza, and Arnold Motor Supply. Westmar sponsors, and I think would appreciate hearing a big thank you from you folks that enjoy Westmar football each Sunday night on Cable Channel 20. Ready to go over the fourth and final quarter. Westmar up by five, and we're going to have a great finish on this one. Blackwell back to punt to open the quarter, and he'll bang it out of there. The direction of Joe Holmberg. Holmberg at the 34. 35 going to the sidelines to the 40, and he'll get out of there. Going to have a penalty flag thrown to the sidelines as there was some contact as uh, Holmberg left the field. I don't know whether they're, maybe they're marking where the ball went out. We'll see if there was a penalty or just marking where Holmberg made his exit. I believe there was a flag though. The referees are talking as if there were a flag. Gonna have a push on Westmar, that blocker coming out there to help Holmberg out. Jeff Schwartz pushed his man on out of bounds. A legal use of the hands gonna be the call. And maybe a second penalty clip. Clipping gonna be the call. Hey, pushed him from behind is a simple fact of the matter, and that's going to be the yardage marked off. So one more penalty to tack on to Westmar's growing numbers in the yardage department and they're under the penalty column. Senior experienced football team. Ten seconds into the final quarter, Westmar backed up to their own 25. There's the give to Hill. Hill going to blast out to about the 30. Hill getting a lot of work carrying the football again here this evening. 27 carries in the opener and he's got a lot of them again tonight simply because he's one of the healthier of the two backs. Pierce used rather sparingly tonight with the hip pointer. Hill not nearly 100% either but he's carried the workload. He's got uh, a strong body that can take some of that punishment. Picked up about seven on the play. It's second down, three to go from the 31-yard line. Out of the eye formation, there's Hill. He'll blast an off tackle to the right, following Hobart, Barton, and Waldheisen upfield. And he'll be short at the 35. So they're going to come up with a third and short yardage situation. Still going to need a good yard and a half for the first down on third. Get ball at the 34-yard line, we'll call it. And we're inside, 14 minutes to go in the ball game this evening. Next Sunday night, we'll have the Dana Westmar game for you. The Eagles coming home next Saturday afternoon. We'll have it for you Sunday night at 8 o'clock on Cable Channel 20. Dana, one of the teams that beat Westmar a year ago. There's Hill, quick pop into the line, and he's going to have enough for the first down, if it looked like. That's been a big play for Charles Hill the last two years, just that little quick opener inside. He's got pneumonia this week. Kind of overdid it with us last weekend, so we'll be glad to get Keith back with us. Here's the give to Charles Hill again in the middle. Charles is going to be stuffed after a half yard gain at the most. A lot of black shirts swarming him. Talk about black shirts here in southeast Nebraska, and that means to most Nebraskans, Husker defensive football is down the road in Lincoln. But it has fit the bill here, I think, in uh, Fremont also with. Millen going to a 
home jersey that features the black color this year. They have featured the orange color so prominently in their football uniform look in the past. Makes it a little easier for us sports announcers to read numbers, I know that. There's the give to Charles Hill up the middle again for a good gain. He just carried people with him that time, and he's out over the 45, about the 47, 48 yard line, and close to another first down. Charles turning in his best series of the ball game. And this one's kind of coming down to being on the line. Boy, another touchdown out of West Bar would put a Warrior team at a real disadvantage because that's the one thing about wishbone style offensive teams. They're not very good catch up football clubs. There's a face mask on top of it all. And apparently a flagrant one from the way Midland is moving their huddle back. That's going to be a major penalty tacked on to the end of the carry. So it's going to move the ball into Midland territory down to the Warrior 38 yard line. First and 10 there with 12 and a half left to go. This is one where you've got to have this senior dominated offensive unit really suck it up and uh, get it on into the end zone now. They've had some near misses on their last two scoring threats. And had to settle for three points out of two great opportunities. One at the end of the half and one at the beginning of the half. Flags go down as the snap of the football takes place. So this one's coming back and yardage be marked off one way or the other. On for four quarters with him now and you're at a point you should be adjusting to the rhythm of the quarterback. There's Hill carrying inside the 40, a nice inside reverse move there. Spin move by Hill and he'll carry to about the 35 yard line. On the stop for the Warriors, number 92, Dexter back. Got 123 yards and penalties against Westmar now unofficially in this ball game. Still got about 12 minutes to go in a ball game. It's Blaine Bell checking out. Rob White comes Second in with a play from the sidelines. Go go, Second down at about eight to go from the Midland 35-yard line. Hobart and Hill in the backfield. Hobart the up back in the eye formation. Marcus Hancher trying to quarterback a victory here tonight. And Kelly McClinic's absence. It's Hill off tackle and he'll be stopped to the line of scrimmage. Got about a yard gain and then driven back. See if they give him the forward progress, which they will, to about the 34-yard line. Number 34 on the stop for the Warriors. Number Third down at about six to go. Westmar liked the inch close enough for at least a field goal shot because that put him up by eight points and put some heat on Midland in the event they would score a touchdown again. They could only be tied with a two-point conversion then. Inside 11 minutes to go in this ball game. Blaine Bell going to split wide to the left. I believe it's Skolton out there wide right. Hancher broken play in the backfield. Now he's going to throw long. Going for Blaine Bell out of his reach. Incomplete. Almost the premature contact there from Steve Wharton from the cornerback spot. But it was apparently all above the rules. And the referee standing right there didn't call anything. So again is what you want to do to a wishbone style offensive team keep them deep in the hole make them go a long ways because chances are on your side they're going to mess up somewhere along the way turn it over or keep themselves in trouble well, white hits one on a line down the field but it sure is effective it's going to roll dead right inside the 10 at about the five white faked as if he was going to run there for a moment took a couple of steps and then almost got a blocked hammer to right up the middle of the field somehow avoided hitting anybody and on a line fired it right up the middle of the field for a good punt players are faced with 95 yards of real estate to regain the lead nobody has scored in the second half hasn't been without action though Sanders got him in a wishbone Blackwell split wide left Sanders hit right off the line of scrimmage taking a fumble I think it's after the fact though Westmar thinks they've got it at the 14, but it isn't going to be so. I don't know how Sanders ever got that handoff out of there, but apparently he did. And apparently it's going to be a gain out to the nine, and the fumble was after the whistle. Boy, Sanders was hit just as he came off the line of scrimmage, and it looked like they had him in the backfield, but somehow as he was going down, he stuffed that handoff in there, and they turned it into some plus yardage. Gain four. It's going to be second down at about six from the nine-yard line. Well, we do have a new quarterback in there. It's Ed Vasek. Vasek, the transfer in from Washburn University. There's the give off tackle to Ryan Richardson, and he's out near first down yardage. 
stopped on the 14. And it's going to bring up a third down and about a yard to go for the first down. Big play coming up for the Westmore defense here in quarter four. Boy, they get their offense in field position if they can stop them here and force them to kick. 9.22 left to play. Looks like the defense is going to be called upon for another big fourth quarter as a week ago. So the defense sealed down the 24-10 victory over Buena Vista. Bassick at quarterback. He's the better running of the two quarterbacks. Sanders may be a little better thrower. Bassick on the keeper. Hit it about the eight. Dove out over the five, over the uh, 15. Hit it about 13 and dove out over the 15. Looks like enough for the first down. Good second effort there by Bassick. Good contact initially, and then he was able to bounce off the Westmar tackler and for the first down to the 16. Inside the nine-minute mark, a lot of clock watching going on because time going to become Westmar's ally. Boy, they just get three and even seven points rang up there on the scoreboard. <laughs> Things that look a lot better. Touchdown, it almost put this one out of reach for Midland. Field goal would put a lot of pressure on the Warriors. Westmar leading it 19-14. There's the give-off tackle to Richardson. They're going strictly to that fullback almost uh, extensively now on the wishbone set. Robert Johnson runs him down at about the 20. Another gain of four, three, four yards, and it's going to bring up a second and six. Ball right on the 20-yard line. In Westmar scoring on two pass plays in the first half from Hancher to Skolton, 25 and 93 yards, and Maury field goals of 39 and 33 yards. Midland on a long run by Harrington and a TD pass from Sanders to Blackwell. Covered 75 yards. There's Vasek on a quarterback draw, and he'll go out to about the 22. So another big third down call coming up for the orange and black. Third down, they need about three yards for the four yards for the first down yet. They've got to get out over the 25. The ball sitting on the 22-yard line. And with a wishbone attack, basically running inside the tackles. That clock's ticking off some viable time. 7.22 left to play in the ball game. Wishbone set, third down, big play coming up in this football game right here. Westmar's defense trying to dig in. Vasek on the keeper. Vasek taken down by, I believe it's Shook. Chad Shook, the freshman out of Denison, ran him down from behind, followed him right down the line of scrimmage, and as he cut back upfield, he hit him and took him down at about the line of scrimmage. I don't think there was any gain on that. And Westmar has stopped him defensively, and Westmar should get the ball in the vicinity of midfield. Blackwell really gets away a dandy punt. Safford and Holmberg back to return it. These two guys haven't gotten loose for anything substantial yet on a punt return. Westmar came for the block. Safford makes the catch at the 43 and will go down at the 45-yard line. Good coverage down there from 67 John Picorni, freshman out of uh, Rising City. Blackwell fell down on that play as he kicked it away. He was trying to make the old Academy Award job, but he didn't buy it, uh, get any attention from the referee. He didn't buy the acting job. Far going to take over at their own 44-yard line. 56 yards away from the end zone. Charles Hill off tackle to the right side. That's their strong side, and he'll power up to about the 50. Going to get about five or six. Boy, they'll just run methodically at that off tackle hole now and watch that clock tick down. They may get away of winning this without any points in the second half. Here comes Rob White into the ball game, and Skolton going to check out of there. 6.08 to go, and we're going to be inside the six-minute mark on the next snap of the football. 19-14 Westmar. White going to go wide left. Out of the wishbone set now. There's Charles Hill off tackle to the right side. Charles going to be stopped at about the... 48, 47 yard line, and they're into Midland territory. Four for number 32, Charles Hill. Hill being used almost exclusively in that Westmar running attack here in the second half. Going to be yard short yet on the first down. Going to spot the ball on the 47 yard line. Third and a short yard. Westmar taking as much time as they can in the huddle. Here again, where a Kelly McClinic influence can really be a calming factor for a team trying to steer this drive. 
using as much clock and hopefully maybe getting some points. Hill down the sidelines, 40, 35, 30, and out of bounds inside the 30 at about the 28-yard line. There was the big play that we're looking for. That's going to be good for 17, 18 yards and another Westmar first down. He did run off the field, which stops the clock, but Westmar fell behind 7-0, scored a touchdown, missed the extra point, trailed 7-6. Then on a field goal by Moore, went ahead 9-7. It's Hill into the middle. Hill going to blast inside the 25 to about the 24. Good for about three. And then it was Midland coming back to go up 14-9 on a touchdown pass that covered 75 yards. Go check it. That was the fourth down run by Harrington, I guess, that uh, put Midland back in front. And Westmark came right back with a long touchdown play of their own. A pass play from Hancher to Skolton. Second time those two locked up on a TD strike tonight. This was a 93-yarder, and it put Westmar up for good. A field goal has made it 19-14. Hancher turns into the backfield to say something to Hobart. Hancher rolling right. Quarterback keeper, Hancher to the 20. Inside the 20 to near the 15. Should have enough for another Westmar first down with 4.18 to go in the ballgame. And the sticks move. And they're going to mark it on the 15-yard line. First and 10. Sent everybody to the left, and Hancher rolled to the right. It's kind of a naked quarterback bootleg. Had a lead blocker, so it was a called play. He had one of the linemen pull out in front of him. First and 10 for Westmar. This is one of their more impressive mistake-free drives of the night to this point. There's the give up the middle again to Hill, and Hill going to carry inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. This is, of course, where some young players on the defensive side of the football for Midland is not able to maybe make that big stop as this one's hanging in the balance and the Warriors needing to grab grass and hold the Eagles out of the end zone. A touchdown would put this one completely out of reach. Westmar is more importantly using up a lot of that clock. This is a nice drive, a very good time-consuming drive, and we're down at the 327 mark. There's a give to Hill. Hill going to dive to about the five-yard line. Charles doing a big workload on this drive, and Charles got her down to the five-yard line. That's close to another first down. Third down and less than a yard to go Third from the five. Boy, oh, it's just a picturesque drive. Using the time up and maybe some points at the end of it. Neil Hall going to come out. Shipley in there as another tight end checks in with a play. It looks like Shipley's going to line up in the backfield along with Hobart and Hill. They've got their power trio in the backfield now. Hancher going to roll to the right. Hancher to the five. Cuts back up inside. Flags all over the place. Touchdown. He got into the end zone, but let's see if it's going to count. Touchdown, number two, Marcus Hancher. Flags went down right where the contact was made. It might be face mask. Westmar's cheering. I think it's going to be against Midland. Touchdown's going to stand. Eagles finally got a penalty flag to go against the opponents. And we had a touchdown wiped out earlier. This one's going to stand. This Touchdown run of five yards by Marcus Hancher, his first career touchdown run at Westmar after throwing the two TD passes earlier, and it looks like he's going to... Maury's PAT try is in there. It's good. It's 26-14. Westmar up now by 12 points with just under three minutes to go. It's going to be a tall order for the Warriors. Eagle football being brought to you tonight by Steel Ford, Schuster Grain, Wells Blue Bunny, the Country Kitchen, Reardon Auto, Vern Anderson Equipment, Newberl Chevrolet, Cruise and Cruise CPA, Sods Barn Grill, Bucky and Foxy's Highlight, Timmy's Cafe, Jeans Plumbing and Heating, Kitchens Incorporated, The Pizza Hut, Hotop Jewelry, Taylor Auto, and Joe's Movie House and Appliance in Video City. gets to kick off in the 50 because of the personal foul on Midland on that touchdown. So they're going to drive the Warriors deep. Here's Seawall at the 10, the 15, and taken down at about the 16-yard line. Tackle going to be made for Westmar by Jeff Schwartz. Pass secondary better tighten their chin straps because they're going to see the ball in the air probably. 
looks like Vasek's uh, still in their quarterback, though, and he's the better runner, not the passer. Sanders would be your throwing quarterback for Midland. 2.44 to play in this football game. Back to pass, a little slant in. Blackwell at the 25, 30, uh-oh, 35, 40, 45, 50. Sprinchy Holmberg can't get him down. Joey Holmberg runs him off the field. Big gainer, first and 10 all the way down. A little too much padding there. Play that little slant in, kind of soft, and Blackwell's dangerous when he gets loose in the secondary. There's evidence there at a big gainer. It's about 45 yards worth of gain, and it's down to the Westmar 41-yard line. Vasek in the option, pitch out. Harrington, 40, and short of the 35. It'll be run off the field at about 37-yard line by Scott Seeloff. Looking down at about eight to go now for the Warriors. Harrington going to check out of there. He's the one you fear on that option play, of course. And checking in, in his place, Mark Prince. Sophomore halfback out of Pierce, Nebraska. Blackwell split wide left. He's, he's the one to be dangerous and be fearful of now. Back to pass, play action, quarterback keeper. And Vasek going to go down at about the 40. Boy, that's a break for Westmore. That'll keep the clock running. Shook took him down. It's 216 left to play in a ball game. And that'll spot the ball at about the 39, bring up a third down and nine. The Warriors looking strictly at four down territory now. Comes Harrington to Seawall back into the lineup. And checking out the two new backs, Prince and uh, Brent Anderson. Well, this spot has to be through the air. They're sending only one split receiver, going to stay in that wishbone set. Well, he's sent some backs out into the pattern, and Johnson, the tight end, will become an important target. He's a big kid, and they like to throw it to him. With a lot of secondary coverage, there's the quarterback keeper, and McLeod read it perfectly. Vasek running right into McLeod. Beautiful defensive end play. The sack back to the 48-yard line. Big one for Westmar's defense. And now it's fourth and long. They're going to have to go for it with a minute 24 left to play in the ball game. And it looks like we got another timeout on the field as the Warriors are going to come over and talk it over with their coaching staff. Like uh, Westmar. Just a little over a minute away from running their first victory down here since 1981 at Fremont. 26 14. It's fourth down at about 17 for the first down. They're going for it naturally. Vasek back, a heavy rush, rolling to his right. And that one's going to be knocked down by Mike Rogers, and that'll about kill Midland's hopes right there. Wanted to go on a screen to the tight end, Steve Johnson to the right flat. Too much pursuit. Mike Rogers got a paw up there and knocked the pass down for whatever got to the intended target. Over on downs at the 48-yard line. A minute eight left to go in this ball game, and Westmar's going to seal it up now. 26-14. Midland does have some timeouts left, I believe. Maybe one. They'll be able to stop the clock maybe once, and then Westmar will just sit on it. There's the give to about the 50, gain of a couple of yards. I believe Hobart carried this time. Spot the ball right on the 50. Picked up two. It's going to be second down and eight to go. Esmar is going to be content to run the thing into the middle and keep that clock moving. Down to the 44 second, second mark. Eight yards to go for the second and eight. Westmar going to take as much time as they can to the huddle. Here comes Rob White in with a play. Down to the 35 second mark. Apparently Midland doesn't have any more timeouts. They're letting that clock run off just about this entire last minute. This could be the last play of the ball game if Midland can't stop it. Hanch are going to get to Charles Hill. debut, Marcus Hancher, Eagles have won it. 26-14, Hancher running for one, throwing for two, Moria with two field goals, Westmar off to a 2-0 start, and next week come home hosting the Nana Vikings. What a big win for the Westmar College Eagles, 26-14, puts them at 2-0, and uh, big thanks to the sports-minded firms that are making Eagle football on Sunday nights possible. People like the Lamar's Beauty College, Plymouth Plumbing and Heating, Augie's, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drug, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penney, b &H Tire, Behind the Eight Ball, First National Bank, Balmer's Shoes, T.J.'s Antiques, 
Susan Mill Standard, the Lamar Savings Bank, Lamar's Truck Haven Cafe, Gertis Pharmacy, Adler's, Williams and Company, Sweet 16 Lanes, Meats and Grubs, Custom Interiors, Evans Clothing, Godfather's Pizza, Arnold Motor, Steel Ford, Schuster Grain, Wells Blue Bunny, The Country Kitchen, Reardon Auto, Vern Anderson Equipment, Newble Chevrolet, Cruise and Cruise CPA, Sods Bar and Grill, Bucky and Foxy Highlight. Pope John Paul is headed back. Bumston Tan.